We start with the rate shock that sparked today's selling. It is the, the perfect music. storm. <laughs> and scary music. Yes. Perfect storm Always. on Wall Street as rates go parabolic. Stocks get slammed. The Dow sinking about 350 points at the lows of the day as it looks like Wall Street is finally starting to panic about rising rates. So is there more rate misery ahead? And where do you run for cover? Pete. You know, I'm not a big run for cover guy, but I will say this. I think there's opportunities out there. But you've never run for cover in your not life. A, not boy. a big cover guy. Oh, but, but I would say this. I do, I do think when we hear tomorrow some of the numbers that we get tomorrow, we might have a pretty good chance of seeing that market get pull, pulled back even further once again. Um, today, the numbers will be good. The It'll numbers will be good. Good news is bad good. news. Right. right. Good news yeah. is bad news, and we get a bit of a sell-off. We already had some of that today. And maybe we get to the levels that we hit today when we were at the bottom. We were down 360, I think, at the lows. So... I'll tell you what really stood out for me today was the way the volatility just absolutely spiked so mm -hmm. fast. I mean, the fact that it went all the way up from 1160 into the upper 15s, that's a pretty big jump. But how long can that last? We've gone through this all year where we get these big spikes, they pull back. Big spikes, they last very short periods of time. So I think that's something that we have to be cognizant of. And I know Karen can speak on that as well. I actually added to financials today. And the reason I did is as we get closer to earnings season, I think the numbers are going to be great. I think they exceed. Obviously, we need the rate environment to slow down. I, if it continues at this rate, I think the whole market, including financials, gets hit. But Pete, so I, not, running velocity. For, not running for cover is probably, and it's certainly proven to be right. Um, but I'll tell you what, here's some things that concern me. Uh, not only do we have, I would say, escalation in the trade war rhetoric. And, you know, and you've had, you had trade ministers across Asia last night saying, prepare for the worst. Hong Kong told uh, their economy, prepare for the worst. You also have, we forget that Treasury funding is also part of why rates are going higher. We're, we're going to basically issue two times as much long-term treasuries in 2019 than we did last year. So there's a lot of pressure on rates coming from all over the place, including the European Central Bank. So I don't think that rates necessarily go to 250 overnight, but to expect that rates don't continue to be something that haunts the market, 350, I'm sorry, 250 would also be scary, um, but, but in a different way. So yeah, I, I, I also think we've had spikes before, but they haven't been one day moves. I mean, I don't see why with positioning where it is, why you jump into this market. Well, I guess the most important rate hike to go back and look at was what happened in January. We started the year, the 10 year treasury yield was at 2.4%. We were very quickly at 2.8%. And that point in late January, that's when US equities, which had this steady march up for a few weeks, really started to think about, okay, what are valuations look like? What are earnings look like? What is in the tank from this tax cut that we just had? What's global, glo uh, global uh, growth look like? Global. And so when you global think about- growth, Dan. <laughs> Sorry. So when you think about what's going on right now, you know, I think that when we had the Dixie, the dollar index retreat from 95 and a half a few weeks ago, people were like, that's it. It's done. It's going back way lower. So look what just happened here with our rates going higher, the dollar going higher. Now, do we have further pressure on emerging markets? And is that the sort of thing that, again, makes... U.S. investors think about how important it is for our multinationals to have this global synchronized recovery, which doesn't seem to be in place right now. We are the only place in town that ISM data it looks great. That's why we had this rate. But look at all the other data that we're seeing around the globe. So it's not fantastic the US right then? now. Are you avoiding no. buying? No. Good. You're not running for cover. I mean, t today was just an awful day, P&L wise. But in terms of running for cover, I was selling cover. I don't, I, you know. I own S&P puts for a gigantic spike in the volatility index. So today, as Pete said, it got well north of 15, over 15. Sold that. Sold that. Mm -hmm. I sold you some. You sold all your puts today in the S&P. Well, I sold lower strikes to make them put you spreads. Roll them up. Yep. To roll them down. It's turned so, into yeah. a spread. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So, so, it's complicated stuff, guys. Watch options action on Friday at 530. <laughs> Nicely done. 530. Thank you. Thank the you. other thing I did is I sold some TBT calls mm. against my TBT position. That's moved a lot this year. And I think that... Everyone expects a hot number tomorrow. If it's not super hot, I think maybe we see rates coming even back a little bit. This has been a really quick move. So, uh, you know, I, was, I could certainly be wrong, but it just felt to me like that herd of panic. I want to I wanna fade. Back. Well, what is a good number tomorrow? In the, from the viewpoint of the stock market. Oh boy, you, it, it, yeah, that that's a great question. What are we looking for? Oh, some XL, Pete. Uh, yeah, well, I. Oh boy. <laughs> what did no, you say? No, it is. I mean, sounded <laughs> scared. Yeah. Well, yeah. You don't know what you wish for at this point, right. almost, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that that's the issue. I think either way, I think the velocity. Karen just brought that up. It has been about the velocity of this move, right, to the upside. So, if we see that that starts to slow and we see more consolidation in terms of where the ten-year is, um, Mel, I think that's going to be huge, and I still think. Take a look at the way energy reacted today. The, look at the energy stocks, the Exxons, the Chevrons, and some of the big names. They pulled back a little bit, not much, 
And, and I think that shows you something about when you've got the great fundamentals, you've got the great balance sheets, you've got this great dividend yields that these guys all have. Those are still places that people see as possibilities that I, I think there's more upside. Financials, I feel the same way, especially with earnings coming up next week. We are positioned, though, right now for a massive short covering rally in the 10 year. I mean, right now, net shorts are at a record high, according to the latest CFTC data. So, depending on what tomorrow's number is, yeah. we could see just a snap. Yes, snap but I, I, don't, I, I don't think, again, this is a one or two day move. And even though we've moved 40 basis points very quickly on the 10 year, uh, and, and people are positioned on the other side. I mean, in other words, to have rates go higher. Um, I don't think people are, are right now positioned with enough fear. And, and that's why I actually look at markets and I think they can continue to drift lower. Um, it doesn't mean there's disaster, but uh, the places that I think will be very defensive here, if you look at what happened today, names like McDonald's and Starbucks and some of the consumer uh, kind of discretionary, but as you got into the, the fast dining, fast casual, I, I totally agree with Pete. I mean, look, the OSX underperformed the S&P for 10% of the last month while oil prices were going higher. One of the reasons why rates is high, are higher is because oil prices are higher. There's a high correlation there. I actually believe that the energy sector is well positioned here going into year end. I think people are on their own. What's defensive in your view, Dan? Well, this so going back to the rates, the spread between the two and the 10, mm -hmm. the fact that that widened out a little bit is why you saw that outperformance today in the bank stocks. But it kind of gave up a little bit. So the spread is at 31 bips or something like that. Not like particularly that exciting or whatever. It just leads me to believe. You're ready to rain on the banks, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Well, I am, right. Yeah. So it leads me to believe. <laughs> I, I'm not, I, I think it's I really just, important to remember a couple umbrella. weeks ago, we had some Q3 data out of Citigroup and out of J. P. Morgan and the banks are not higher from that point. Okay, we had this quick spike and they're lower. So to me, I actually think that the yield curve is going to increasingly get to that inverted point. I know Tony's just going to have at it with us on that one uh, pretty soon. But I just think that that's the thing that keeps banks underperforming the broad market.